Well, uh, that's that's really all I can say. Wow, wow, to a dog. Yeah. <laughs> My God. Hi. Welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace, and today we're going to be talking about the Scarlet Amulet of Fate. Just a quick one about this, as well as the new quality of life updates that you may have seen on Twitter. Just so much going on today in terms of the news drop from Alchemy Stars. And so without further ado, let's talk about this one first, because like, oh my god, it just dropped like 27 minutes ago, and I'm just like, I am so glad. I am so glad that I did not pull for Florine. I did not pull for Ruby. I'm sorry, my schoolgirls. I'll come back for you another day. Hopefully, maybe on the triple R banners. I don't know. But all I can say is like, oh my god. It's like Tencent or Tour Dog or the board of directors were like literally, oh my god, let's just keep pumping it out. We want those wallets now. We want it so freaking bad. Like a shrine priestess and then one of those like zombie people with the tag on their face. I think they're called Jiang Shi. And so, I mean, just looking at this image, I reckon that she is going to be a six star over here. And I think she's going to be a five star. And also from my biases from Genshin Impact, I think this shrine priestess looking person is going to be a Thunder Aurorian. It is literally Yai. Miko's sister. Older sister, younger sister, I don't know. It looks like an Onesan to me, man. And so this image is almost the only news that we have gotten about the Scarlet Amulet of Fate. I do want to switch over to this one over here. And as you can see, you can see there is another female character here with a Chi Pao, with a uh, Chong Sam, whatever you want to call it. Like, oh man. I cannot wait for this character either. I don't know about you guys, but I am like a super, super sucker for these Chi Pals, for these uh, Korean dresses, Chinese, Vietnamese. I am not sure like where they originate from, but I am just so glad that they exist. These ones right here. Like my guys, look at that. I I can't get enough of it, man. I cannot get enough of these attires. All right, and so to be honest, like this middle character over here, who I do think is going to be showing up in this event, she was the main reason that I was saving my jammies, but now I think the Shrine Priestess is my real primary reason. All right, and to be honest, like any attempts of me trying to figure out what class they are, like she could literally be a detonator, she could be a support, she could be a healer. I, I, I feel like Alchemy Stars and Tour Dog, they have just been like, okay, we're literally just gonna make anybody anything. Like my guys, look at this. Look at Florian. Florian, actually, you know what? Looking at that cute face, I'm kind of feeling like I wanna roll now. No! But yeah, just judging by like the initial as well as the ascended art, I would have thought that she'd be either a sniper or a detonator. No, nope, she's a freaking two times chain combo support. It's like, bruh, I don't even know what's going on anymore. Anyway, so coming back over to this one, I do believe that this is also going to have a part one and part two because of this guy over here. I think this is trying to say Scarlet Amulet of Fate 1, which kind of implies that there is going to be a part 2, if I am right about this one. If this is, I don't know, like, do you guys think it's a 1? I think it's a 1. But regardless with that, that's all of the images, all of the news that we do have surrounding the Scarlet Amulet of Fate. So with that being said, let's move on to this guy over here, which is honestly just an incredible update from Tour Dog. So essentially what we have here are a whole bunch of quality of life updates. Let me uh, go into the bigger version over here. Here. And I want to talk about this from like kind of a day one player point of view as somebody who has, I wouldn't say suffer, but has been playing with these kind of systems since day one and kind of wishing that there was something better. I want to kind of shine that perspective on here. All right. And so let's go through each of these ones. Number one is that the number of formations is increased from four to eight, which is fantastic because although there are four elements, there are a lot of times where we do want to actually be able to form more than one element per team or one team per element. And and I feel like eight slots for team slots is probably a pretty good place to stop because although we are getting more and more Aurorians, there are some that are going to be falling out of meta. And so probably two teams for each element at max is probably the way to go. Okay, so pretty happy about that one. Although to be honest, I'm not really affected. I think a lot of other people were like, man, they're running out of team slots real fast. Please give it to them. All right, so second of all is the optimization on the position of the auto button in battle. So if you can see that over there, auto and two times the buttons have actually swapped and this is a really really interesting one because ever since like the beginning of time this has actually played
plagued all users where when we try to hit the auto button or if we try to hit the change leader, we sometimes more often than not actually hit the other one, which we weren't trying to hit. So for example, if I was trying to hit this three to change the leader, I would sometimes, sometimes hit the auto button instead. But honestly, playing on the PC, whether it be via like emulator or the DMM client, being able to click it, it didn't really actually affect me overly much. However, for the mobile experience, I completely sympathize. And so another great change with that one. Let's go to number three. Maximum number of Aurorian upgrade materials usable raised. Oh my God, this is so freaking big because I don't know about you guys, but like, I, I mean, I haven't farmed as much as that. That is quite a significant amount. But for me, my Aurorian upgrade materials, they are starting to go into the thousands simply because I've been farming them, but I cannot be stuffed going past like the 99 cap and having to do like, like freaking 10 times. I just cannot be bothered. And so a whole bunch of my Aurorians are sitting at like level 40, A340, something like that. To me, I think this is one of the more more significant changes, I would like to actually see on top of this a way to farm these purple ones here. All right, and so after that, let's go on to number four, which is improved gifting. So the idea is kind of the same. However, this time it's about the experience of the gifting itself. So I don't know about you guys, but I had to like spam click the hell out of these gifts to be able to go to a high number, whether it be like 50 or 100 or whatever, you couldn't actually hold down to be able to multi-select before. And so that is essentially what is happening here. Improved gifting by allowing you to hold down so that you can select more faster. All right, and so number five, the option to convert faction materials. This one is so freaking big because there is certainly an imbalance in terms of the alignments of the Aurorians. For example, I think like the, the vast majority of Aurorians are sitting in Lumopolis or, or Illumina or True Order. There aren't actually that many independent Aurorians, stuff like that. And so therefore you're going to have like a major overflow of the independent materials. And so what what this means is that that extra stack of independent materials can now actually be converted to any of those other ones. But what I do want to say about this one, the best part about it is that it is actually going to be a one-to-one -one conversion only taking up the green currency like the alchemy thing because in a lot of other games in like Ark Knights, Revive Witch, whenever there is like an upgrade material conversion kind of system, usually it's like two to three or it's like five to seven. And what I mean by that is like you got to trade three of the original material for two of the target materials, which is kind of like, well, it's clearly a lot less efficient. And so the implementation that Tour Dog has done, like I freaking love it. Kudos to you, my guys. Kudos to you. All right, so after that one, we have number six over here, which is filter and view Aurorians by their main attributes on the Aurorian page. This is pretty good. It is quite annoying, actually, the current filters. So what this is kind of saying is like, well, you see that checkbox over there. It says includes secondary elements. So when you filter for the attribute, in this case, they are filtering for water and you want to only look for like the main element water Aurorians. We can now do that after this update. Because previously what happened, especially with the dual element Aurorians, was that those dual element Aurorians would actually show up even if like, for example, in this case, if water was their secondary element. However, typically speaking, when we actually use this filter, we want the primary elements, right? Because like when we're building a water team, you don't really look for the water secondary element units. You're looking for the primary element units with water, right? And so although this sounds like a very, very small change, it's quite impactful, especially in that scenario. All right, and so moving on, improvement of battle AI and logic. Ah, man, guys, I swear to God that they've had this sitting like in the back somewhere in their basement for a very, very long time, ever since that Fight Club event. Because in that Fight Club event and like when we have to do it in that disc thing, like they clap our ass cheeks so freaking hard. And so it's nice to see them actually ship it out for us to use. Honestly, nothing left to be said about that one. Just fantastic change. Please give it to us. It was overdue. And so let's move on to the next one over here. Maximum number of friends increase. So increase from 50 to 100. Yeah, I don't know what else I could say about that. Like, I mean, maybe I could make up some stories about like how I am so loved and like how I need to make a lot of friends and stuff, but that's actually not very true. Okay, that was kind of cringy. Let's move on to number nine. Optimization on the trigger logic of bonus time for the Nitium stage. So this one is really, really freaking interesting because like where it used to be RNG based, 
it is now actually going to be known when you're going to be getting that bonus stage. So you don't have to like mold, you don't have to just be like, oh, preparing all your tiles to make sure that you can do the most damage to all of those different mobs to find as much an item in the bonus stage as you can. But on top of that, the nice thing about this is that it kind of equalizes like the RNG. So it's not like, oh man, my friend is like hitting these bonus stages like, oh bam, oh bam, another bonus stage and then another one and then another one. And then meanwhile, I'm over here and I'm just like not getting any bonus stages as well. This is really good because it at least guarantees it that we are going to have kind of like a fair experience. And so yeah, that's quite nice. Uh, for me, it's kind of like, it's good. It is good. It's just not the greatest. I feel like there are some that are really great, like the improvements to the battle AI. I feel like number seven, I feel like number five, the option to convert faction materials is certainly one of the top changes for me. And then after that, it's this one over here, maximum number of Aurorian upgrade materials usable raised. Oh my God. <laughs> My fingers freaking hurt, man. And so that's essentially all of these quality of life updates. However, there is a little bit of a secret over here and I wanna direct your attention to this one. This picture down here, let me just scroll in a little bit so you guys can see. Do you guys see that over here? Kayano, five of these stars. And then she looks like she has one of those tag things on her head. Boom, Kayano over here five star i don't know about you guys but i kind of feel like i'm a prophet well maybe less a prophet more of a detective so my guys it does look like kayano this jiangshi over here is going to be a five star water aurorian so dog you cannot dmca me for that one because this is literally on your official stuff okay come on guys Guys, come on. However, you still can't really tell if she's gonna be like a detonator or a supporter or whatever. I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say that she is gonna be a support. And so with this little leak image thing, there is kind of another inference that we can make. And that is that Albuba Goddess Shrine Priestess over here is probably not going to be a water element Aurorian considering she isn't showing up with the rest of these six stars. I did say that I was gonna guess she was gonna be Thunder. However, there is a chance that she is gonna be a fire unit because you know, you guys know like the fox fire and all of that the blue flames etc etc there's a chance you know there is a chance and if she freaking turns out to be a forest unit guys i don't even know man i'm i'm gonna quit guessing i'm just gonna quit freaking guessing anything about alchemy stars however with that that is going to bring us to the end of the video so i did want to ask you guys out of all of these different updates these quality of life changes which ones are your favorite for me again i think number seven is number one five is number two Two, three is number three and then potentially fourth for number four and the others i'm kind of like yeah it's pretty good let me know how you guys are feeling about all of these quality of life updates down in the comments below and if you do end up leaving a comment i would really appreciate that because it means that you've watched up until the end of the video so thank you guys so much if you did like this video then please consider a like and if you would like to see more then please consider a subscribe but otherwise my guys as your girl kayano once said all good things must come to an end and she got freaking leaked so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.